Hello beautiful people today is 12th of June my name is Sahil and welcome to newspaper analysis friends today we'll take a quote from Lemon Gobe she is a liberian non violent activist and had won a nobel peace prize in 2011 she says you can never leave footprints that last if you are always walking on tiptoe so friends in a way this particular quote reflects the value of initiative bearing or taking the initiative you needs to be a reformer rather than to be a confirmer and this happens to be a major value for the civil servants which has been mentioned in your gs paper number 4 ethics so guys whenever the question on to the initiative bearing comes you can use this particular quote can also be used into the essay so friends this was the mains question that i gave you yesterday so the question says that a sound industrial policy is not only that delivers growth but creates regional and global opportunities for economy highlight briefly giving examples from industrial policy since independence now guys this question relates to paper number 3 economy and here you needs to tell that how in india we face the problem of uneven regional growth due to which the country has been divided into the pockets of developed and non developed regions and how by bringing industrialization evenly throughout the country various regional as well as global opportunities will be developing then guys you need to highlight various industrial policies that have came since independence for example you can quote shyama prasad mukherjee industrial resolution of 1948 then there is industrial resolution of 1956 and going up to 1991 so guys you can use them can tell their traits and can trace that how the development came moreover guys into the conclusion you need to reassert the statement which has been given because in question itself a kind of a solution has been provided and it is just asking you to substantiate that thing so guys that thing will work here moreover after this brief discussion from now onwards we will also try to provide you an indicative model answer on to our telegram group so that you can match that answer with your own so for most of the answers we will try to provide it and friends please do like and subscribe to our initiative because it takes a lot of effort and your little appreciation means a lot so thank you and let's now begin with the newspaper analysis friends this is today's newspaper and let's have a brief overview of the entire paper first so here it has been said that the economic recovery is uncertain by the chief economic advisor we'll see certain economic trends then moving forward nirf reports have been out so we will look into the background and the issues here after that guys we will see here the issue of the foreign tribunals and their detention and which could be important for our gs2 then guys moving forward in between the news only with respect to the covid etc has been mentioned not important for our exam then coming into the editorial section so first editorial talks about the lac issue which is going on and what could be the reason for the china's insecurities then guys this particular editorial is a excerpt from the speech which has been made by the former ambassador gopal krishna gandhi so it is just a part of a speech it contains two trends one is the trend as how the earth might be taking a revenge right now due to the pandemic from the pandemic and the second how the migrants are suffering guys there is no substance into the editorial with respect to the upsc but the use of language has been good so if you want for your leisure you can read but for upsc substance is not there in this editorial then what is a quiet diplomacy we'll see this thing then guys here the data with respect to the covid 19 recovery rate and all that thing has been provided not important because it will change then on to the next page here we can see is work from home feasible so we'll see what are the positives what are the negatives now guys this article compares the wwe and reality tv shows not important then moving forward here only regional news are there then guys we will be reading the, the line census as how it is outdated then government is now considering the universal basic income nhrc report will see this thing then guys moving forward the feature page is not needed for us then guys going forward on to the international page much important news have not been there so we'll go to the business page and on to the business there have been a suggestion by the reserve bank of india will see this thing the corporate news are not important for us then on to the back page the estimation of the indian gor has been given so just a couple of things we'll see here and now let's take up the detailed analysis 
Now friends, chief economic advisor had hinted that the economic recovery in India will be uncertain. Friends, these are certain fundamental backgrounds which you should have in your mind if you are writing any answer on economy in GS paper number 3. Now see, first of all, recently what has happened, Moody's, which is a global credit rating agency, had downgraded the India's credit rating from BAA2 to BAA3. And right now BA3 means that we are just above the junk level and also it is the lowest investment grade category. Now according to Moody's this downgrade has been given because of certain reasons. For example government was not able to start the economic growth and employment rate was low, export sector was weak and all these things was there before even the pandemic began. Now just a day back S&P and Fitch, both of them are the credit rating agencies. They had also hinted that India's economic recovery will be bad. And then the chief economic advisor has also said the same thing. Now friends, what was happening? Earlier it was being assumed that India will be facing the V-shape recovery curve. So V-shape means that we will go down and after reaching the lowest point, suddenly there will be the recovery but now it has been said that india will be facing a u shape recovery where will go at the lower level and for some time we will stay here and then there will be the recovery so earlier it was thought that after the second half of the year the recovery will begin but that is will not be the case and up till the next year there is no respite however both finance ministry as well as rbi are working into this direction that how economic growth can be brought back in this direction finance ministry has announced 20 lakh crore economic package whereas reserve bank of india had came out with initiatives such as long term repo operations where long term money is being given to the banks moreover rbi had also relaxed various npa norms lending norms etc so guys, this is the economic prospect which is going right now and now we'll move to next. Now friends here, the issue of foreigners and their detention in Assam has been mentioned. Now friends, looking into the background of this issue. See, first of all, there has been large number of migrants who had came to India from the Bangladesh. And from the very start, there have been protests that these illegal migrants should be deported back. And guys, in this particular direction, the most important accord came in 1985 which is called as Assam Accord. So it is an agreement between the ASU that is all Assam student union and government. And here a decisive call was given that the illegal migrants should be identified and should be sent back to their country. Now guys, even before this Assam Accord, there was a certain arrangement and that arrangement was the Foreigners Act of 1946 and this act defines who are the illegal foreigners. Now guys, using one particular section that is section 3, a separate order was passed through this act that was a foreign tribunal order of 1964 and as per this order into the Assam foreigner tribunals were established and now let's trace exactly what has happened. So first of all people will be identified who are doubtful to be citizen of India and if they are not able to prove their citizenship then the Assam police border organization will identify and mark them as the illegal immigrants and after that their case will go to the foreigners tribunal and if foreigner tribunals also believed that they don't have proper document then the foreigner tribunal will call them as the illegal foreigner and then they need to be deported but guys there is no arrangement that where they will be deported so then there are the detention centers which are made into the assam they are just like the jail so they are lodged there and throughout the detention centers a large number of people have been lodged and many of them are the illiterate daily wage earners now guys in this particular direction earlier there was a report also by the amnesty international which was called as the designed to exclude and in this particular report it was said that arbitrarily these foreigner tribunals are branding anybody as the foreigners and the people are being lodged here so guys now as into the aftermath of a pandemic a large number of people has been released 
so that the detention centers could be decongested and guys into this particular direction this news is mentioning the case of two people who have now been released however guys this is not important you need to understand that how this entire mechanism is working so guys that's all now we'll move to next now here in this particular news the national institutional ranking framework has been mentioned where the institutions have been given a rank onto the basis of their performance so now you can see that these are the top 10 performing institutes guys we don't need to remember all the institutes you can refer remember only one or two now guys going into this particular issue see India is majorly a young country and has a large number of workforce due to which we also say that India might be reaping a demographic dividend into the times to come. But this dividend will only be coming when our population will be skilled and will be properly educated. But at the same time, if we see the condition of the higher education in country, it is dismally low barring the top premier institutions. So guys, Ministry of Human and Resource Development had started the National Institutional Ranking Framework where the institutions are given a rank onto the basis of certain parameters. Now, this particular thing instills a competition into the educational institutions to strive for the excellence and in this way, a kind of a better outcomes in education can be achieved. Now guys, talking more about the NIRF, there different different distinctions have been made for the college, university, technical institutes, management institute and there is an overall category also. Since 2016, these rankings are coming out and this year 2020, nearly 3800 institutes have participated into this ranking where these are the top so as I have told you that overall ranking is also given. So there are certain parameters and these are the five parameters on which basis the overall ranking is given. You can see that could be important for the prelims. Now guys, this particular ranking comes after a day when the QS world ranking was announced and into this world ranking, there was no Indian Institute into the top 10 and the earlier institute's position has also been degraded. Now the government says that here into the QS world ranking we had slipped because of certain flawed parameters and these flawed parameter is number one the perception where a very big weightage is given. Now guys into the developing countries perception of education is not always good and here India lacks. The second point is the internationalization. So guys it means that how many of foreign faculties are there into the college and how many foreign students are there but there also India performs poor due to which into the QS world ranking the performance is not good but in NIRF government says we use even more better outcomes and it is little bit more objective based whereas into the QS more subjectivity is there because guys you know that the perception is a subjective thing. So here the parameters such as graduation outcome, outreach, inclusivity, research, productivity, impact, learning outcomes, they are little bit more good into this direction and are clearly measurable. However, perception is still given a place. So into the times to come, it is being hoped that the world institutions will be having a need to participate into the NIRF and India will be making a global brand in education in times to come. So guys, that's all. Now we'll move to next. Now friends here, the National Human Rights Commission had inspected the Lok Nayak Hospital where the complaints were being made that the infected people are not being treated. Now guys, we don't need to see which hospital is being seen or that. Rather, we need to see the mandate of the National Human Rights Commission. So, in order to protect the human rights, there is the most important international convention that is Universal Declaration of Human Rights which was signed in 1948. And India also happens to be the signatory here. However, in 1993, India passed the Protection of Human Rights Act and under this particular act, we had formed the National Human Rights Commission, guys, which has a chairman, four members and there are four other ex-officio members also. So, chairman is needed to be a retired Chief Justice of India. Whereas this is the qualification for other four members. First needs to be a Supreme Court judge or the one who has worked as such. Second one is the one 
who has earlier been the chief justice of high court or is right now and the two members should have practical experience into the human rights matter then guys the chairman of national commission for minorities scheduled caste scheduled tribes and women also are the ex officio members further guys when we talk about the working then they can take the suo moto action that is on their own or all to the basis of a complaint however one thing also needed to be kept in mind that nhrc cannot enquire into any offense after the period of one year from the date when it has occurred so guys this is all about nhrc now we'll move to the next now we are into the editorial section and these two editorial talks about the bilateral dispute that is going on to the india china border now guys first of all if you don't know we never use the word indo china for the india china rather we use the sino india indo china is used for three countries that is laos vietnam cambodia however coming back to our article so friends right now the contention is into the two major regions one is the ladakh and other is the nakula pass into the sikkim so friends yesterday also we had seen the story behind the nakula so you can refer to the yesterday's paper also moreover ladakh we are also following so guys now the major contention can be summed up into some prominent locations first is the chusul second is the fingers region which you can see here which is on the north of the pangong lake and the third is the galwan now guys over the days at various military official level the talks have taken place and up to now there is little bit success on to the galwan however on to the chusul as well as pangong the situation is still not that very much clear now guys though china had said that we are also withdrawing but their words and their actions say something very contrary now india only needs one solution that is restoring the status quo which was during the time of april now guys the major contentions many a times i have told you is on to the fingers region which are also called as chang chenmo range so here india controlled the territory up to finger number 4 and had said that their claim extends up to finger number 8 now friends it is being believed that the china has made incursions because of their own insecurities as recently india had updated its infrastructure into the border regions which india was always entitled to do because the territory belongs to india now this construction activity broke the asymmetry into the situation because china had always upgraded infrastructure and now as india was also doing so a kind of a threat was assumed so therefore these incursions are the part of china's own insecurities now guys moving forward how this particular dispute can be resolved so for that particular thing the editorial suggests the quiet diplomacy because the bilateral relations are very sensitive and if they are unnecessarily flared up into the media or into some alternative channels then the issue becomes on to the stake of populism and because of that particular thing talks can be derailed into a unnecessary or unventured territory now guys in 2013 also incursions were made by the chinese into the depsang plain and they pitched their tents over there now at that point of time the matter was not blown out of proportion rather india issued a threat that the state visit by chinese premier li keqiang will be cancelled if the status quo will not be restored and this thing was carried very quickly quietly and as a result the chinese withdrew from here then guys the same thing happened similar thing happened in 2014 when chinese made incursions into the chumar and at that point of time there was a visit by the mr xi jinping and then again by using the quiet diplomacy a message on the detroiting relations was carried to the china and again the status quo was restored then in 2017 chinese tried it to upgrade unilaterally their infrastructure into the doklam which happened to disturb the trilateral arrangement between the china bhutan and india and therefore india helped bhutan here and united front was given to the china however at that point of time very quietly on to the diplomatic channels the matter was discussed and finally the status quo was restored chinese withdrew and didn't upgraded the infrastructure and indian army also retreated back 
so it is being said that right now also the need of the r is using the quite diplomatic channels and uh, escalating the issue onto the media or out of proportion will just be derailing the matters and in this direction government needs to follow certain steps first of all it needs to keep the opposition informed with respect to the development because it is the right to opposition to get know about the ground realities then the media should not be avoided rather should be engaged very strategically that there is no information famine because it will give rise to the rumors and at the same time over sensitization should also not be carried so therefore right now the need is of quite diplomacy which has also proved fruitful into the recent times also so guys that's it now we'll move to next this is a coordinated discussion where we'll see that what are exactly the negative as well as positive impacts from work from home with the even the modest estimates it is being said that the pandemic will be going to stay for at least 12 to 18 months so the idea from work from home or work from anywhere simply will going to stay however this idea is not exactly new into the it industry where the client and service provider model prevails and necessity of physical presence is rarely required now friends when we talk about work from home there are certain services or goods which might be provided without the physical interaction for example consultation teaching technological counseling and all these kind of things however still human touch is required and there are certain industries which are not at all offered through the lack of physical interaction moreover even when we are talking about teaching the level of quality which one can get into the physical classrooms is not actually provided without the physical interactions but still there are certain positives and negatives and now we'll see that one by one now guys first of all looking that what could be the problems into this particular regard first of all guys gender divides could be reinforced for example if there is a single computer into the house then the priority will be given to the male member and that to the senior most male member that he should use the equipment first so therefore the women can be segregated and their work could be treated as the secondary and they need to face the repercussions for that particular thing into their office secondly there is a problem of internet connectivity because still now large chunks of interiors don't have a stable and a functional internet connection after that guys there will be the increased burden on women and this particular thing has also been recognized by various ngos as well as self help groups now even when they are working from home for 8 9 hours still they need to perform their domestic household responsibilities also which will pose an additional burden then guys what about the migrants who had came back to their homes and for them the work from home concept is not suited because it can only be suitable for the it related industries after that talking about the students the institutions or the schools in were to be the places where their socio economic differences were not that much pronounced but when the teaching at home or through online medium will take place then guys through the webcam their socio economic distinctions will be very much visible through the setup of their home and finally the work places or the physical locations were not only the places for the work rather social contact bonding sharing these values were also used to take place there and they will not now be shared and guys actually the notion of work as a happy place will also end because the abuse tension all these things will be carried into the home when the work from home concept will be introduced now guys talking about the positivities see when the internet connection is concerned bharat net project has been started by the government and internet connectivity is reaching even to the panchayat levels then guys though we are talking about there could be the problem but at very large level the students or unprivileged children could be taught by the compassionate students as well as the people from the different countries also and this exercise is being taken into the industries such as cognizant after that guys the companies can now hire the more women from the tier 2 cities or to the hinterland which earlier were not able to come into the bigger cities now they will also be hired when the work from home will be introduced 
and now guys finally when we talk about the conclusion see there are not always binary that either there will be only the negatives or there will only be the positives but they have their own benefits as well as the disadvantages and even into the times to come only work from home model or work into the physical locations will also not be there rather it will be a hybrid model where both the things will be favored and in such a way the future could be anticipated so guys that's all about this now we'll move to next yesterday we had discussed a news with respect to the population of lions into the gir national park now it has been alleged that the methodology which was used to count the lion or the lion census was flawed or outdated and the results might be wrong now friends the study or the census has been questioned by the wii that is wildlife institute of india which happens to be an autonomous body under the ministry of environment forest and climate change and is working since 1982 for the conservation of the wildlife and wildlife research as well as management now guys according to the wii into the census direct beat verification or the block counting method has been used now in this particular method what happens near the water bodies into a protected area personals observe the tiger loins which are coming and drinking water and on this particular pattern they identify the number of lines but this particular methodology is very much outdated and now there are more scientific methods into this particular regard for example there is camera trapping then there is identification onto the basis of permanent marks onto the body of lines then guys statistical estimates can be carried onto the basis of the predatory pattern as well as by seeing the number of prey into the region their population can also be counted so all these scientific methods have not been utilized and in its place still direct beat verification has been done which is nearly century old moreover guys earlier not only the member from the department of forest used to conduct the census rather people from the non-governmental organization wildlife experts etc were also used to be enrobed but now only the forest department has conducted the method so there are also the questions with respect to the transparency moreover guys this particular year the process has been carried by far less personals due to which again the questions of the effectiveness comes and finally there have been large number of lions which have been died by the cdv that is canine distemper virus but their adjustment has not been made into the final tally of the lions guys 36 lions died in 2018 they died in 2019 also and even into the january 2 at 2020 they had also died but their adjustment has not been carried so the population might not be the real as it has been suggested by the survey now friends if we talk about the cdv then it is a rna virus which impacts large number of canines felines and other animals also and happens to be a major disease into the animals so guys that's all about this now we'll move to next now friends here government is considering the universal basic income and that thing has been said by the national human right commission now what has happened national human right commission prepares at the interval of every 4.5 years universal periodic review and in this particular report you nhrc observes that what government is doing with respect to the human rights policies onto the climate change women right child right disabled rights all these things are seen and then that periodic report is submitted to the united nation human right commission and into this universal periodic review it has been observed by the nhrc that earlier the idea of universal basic income was floated to the government and now government is actively considering how the ubi could be given to the people now guys universal basic income means that irrespective of a status of a particular person he will be given some monetary compensation at the end of a month or quarterly or yearly and even the economic survey has also suggested that the ubi should be given in india but the major constraint happens to be the fiscal space because that is very much restricted moreover guys nhrc has also said that government is also working into the line of 
providing more accessible education to the disabled children and in this direction human resource development ministry has been asked to create a holistic inclusion of children in the new draft national education policy which will be coming however at the same time nhrc has shown its discontentment with respect to the implementation of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe prevention of atrocities act 1989 which was meant to safeguard the interest of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe so friends these are some important notings of this particular report you can use it when you are writing any answer on to the social justice so guys that's all now we'll move to next now friends into this particular news reserve bank had suggested certain governance reforms into the banks seeing the mismanagement that is going and that mismanagement is evident from the detroiting financial instability into the banks first of all before going into this particular reform earlier also the indra dhanush mission indra dhanush for the banking sector came which also suggested for wide number of reforms so it suggested seven reforms one was with respect to the appointment then there was the bank board bureau which was to be constituted then capitalization de-stressing empowerment performance and other reforms into the times to come without any political interference so guys you can refer to that however now the scheme is very old just for the reference purpose we had seen by the way there is one more indra dhanush for the vaccination also please don't get confused there now coming back to the news here reserve bank of india has proposed in reforming the position for the ceos and the whole time directors so that the governance can be improved now here it has been said that any member of the board should not be the member of any other board for any other bank or the into the board of the rbi because it will lead to the conflict of interest moreover the board member should not be an mp mla or member of any other local body moreover guys with respect to the strength of the board it has been said that the strength should not be less than 6 and not more than 15 further in order to maintain the continuity it has been said that the board shall meet at least 6 times a year and at least every 60 days moreover guys various provisions with respect to the appointment then there is the termination upper age etc have also been made however we will not be going into those tiny details because it is right now just a kind of a suggestion and the feedback has been asked so it is not the final version but these are certain reforms which you can suggest if you are writing any question on to the reforms into the banking so guys three four points here will suffice so that's all now we'll move to next now guys here for the first time the estimation exercise for the indian gore has been conducted into the nilgiris now will not be going into the details because it contains the number the data the name of the villages where the gores have been found but not not important for our exam however we'll see what is the iucn status of the gore so on to the iucn red list he has been given the status of the vulnerable and it is native to the south and southeast asia and into the large population it is found into the nilgiris western ghats so friends that's all and now let's move to the question section guys please pause the video and try to answer the questions so today's question is with respect to the art and culture you need to match the cultural treasuries here and try to identify guys these are type of questions on to the matching has been asked with the upsc please try to attempt now friends the question number 2 is with respect to the genetic engineering appraisal committee by the way such question has been asked into the upsc also try to attempt it and the question number 3 is with respect to the lion census that has been conducted recently please try to identify this friends question number 4 is with respect to the globally important agricultural heritage system please see this code and try to identify it now guys we are into the mains question so the question for today is this working culture of the organization is going to witness a sea change discuss the ethical and social concerns with changing work culture impacted by the rise of disruptive technologies so guys during the present condition this questions become highly relevant try to answer it so guys that's all i hope you are liking our discussion thank you so much